you know, every time I watch the 1987 live action Masters of the Universe movie and the city attack scene happens, the one where Skeletor and his whole armada sort of like comes in to this portal into Earth and Skeletor's riding on this giant flying air chariot uh, and they're mounting this invasion. And I just always wondered to myself, why couldn't Skeletor or any of his army guys just be on flying rotons instead? Okay. I mean, this air chariot thing or the sail barge that Skeletor's on I mean, is freaking impressive. I sure wouldn't mind having a toy representation of this thing at some point in the future if somebody's going to be doing it. But uh, it just seems to me that it would have been... I mean, the film obviously didn't have that much of a budget to begin with, yeah? But uh, it just would have been much more easier, I suppose. Uh, probably more cost efficient, you know? And definitely a lot more iconic if they just went with the designs of the Roton instead uh, for Skeletor and his guys. What do you guys think? Hey guys, Ken here from the Retro Toys Capades channel in Malaysia. On the channel today, I'm looking at the recent announcement from Mattel on the return of the Roton vehicle to retail shelves everywhere as part of their Motu Origins line of toys for 2022. Now, I can't say that the Roton is exactly one of my favorite Masters of the Universe vehicles but it is definitely an iconic and, you know, indispensable part of any serious Motu collection. Now, all incarnations of the Roton vehicle, dating all the way back to the classic Mattel release from the 1980s, have always followed the same design specifications. Mainly, it's a circular-shaped vehicle that Skeletor or any of the evil warriors rides into battle. It's capable of mounting an assault either by land or by hovering through the air. The toy comes with these plastic saw blades all along the edges. The gimmick was that if you push the Roton along on a flat surface, the saw blades would start to turn. Now, it can be equal parts fun and also something that you might get bored of in about 10 minutes. But the main attraction of the toy was its simplicity and the fact that it didn't cost all that much. It was pretty much an entry-level Moto vehicle for parents to get for their kids. Even today, finding loose and complete units of the original Roton on eBay isn't too much of a challenge, all right? You can get one for something pretty affordable, but just don't try looking for any of those mint in box units, all right? Uh, that's where you're screwed. Now, we didn't really get that many images of the new Roton that was shared out. Uh, I'm guessing that a lot of this thing is still pretty much top secret, okay? But there's just enough here for us to recognize that all of the traditional design touches of the Roton are present, plus some new ones. One of the new accessory bits is this snarling looking face shield that fits onto the vehicle front. This thing is like an additional face mask that the Roton puts on, one that has an even angrier face than the face that's already on the vehicle. We're also getting this canopy-like piece that fits onto the vehicle cockpit, uh, something else that the original didn't have. It kind of looks like something from a birdcage, you know. If this thing was meant to protect the driver though, well... <laughs> You know, there's a lot of gaps here for enemy laser fire to sneak through. Now, interestingly, all the way back in the 80s, the model kit company Monogram released a version of the Roton that had the same design elements. So it's possible that Monogram were working off some early concept versions of the Roton. Anyway, this Monogram release is seldom seen today. And uh, you know what? It's really nice, okay? And that box artwork, man, it's just gorgeous. I was wondering though, in this image here, just who in the hell is this driver supposed to be? Monogram also released several other beautiful model kits from Masters of the Universe, including the Talon Fighter and the Attack Track. However, if you look at the image here, you'll see that all of the designs for the vehicles are vastly different from what would eventually come out in vehicle toy form from the Mattel series. But let's not forget that these are still model kits, okay? So you're gonna need a lot of time, patience, and steady hands, I guess, to assemble and paint them to look as good as the images on the promotional kit. You know, always a catch. Now, if you were to look back at the Moto Classics version of the Roton that came out a couple of years ago, this one also had these extra design elements that were thrown in as an option. So technically, if I were to look at this version of the Roton, the one from Classics, it's basically the same concept art version that Monogram put out all the way back in the 80s. So, you know, if you have this version, you technically already have this concept art version that even Origins is working on right now. Now, Mattel also mentioned that this new Roton was going to be bigger. 
Well, I guess that's not much of a surprise considering that almost everything that's come up before this, like from the Land Shark to the freaking Wind Raider to Stridor, they've all been really massive as compared to the 80s counterparts, right? But if I were to estimate the new Roton size, I would have to say that it's got to measure up to the new Wind Raider that came out a couple of months ago. And, uh, you know, this Wind Raider obviously it was a huge disappointment for me i talked about it in my video review but one thing i will say is that it's just freaking massive okay it's huge i'm surprised that you could actually attach to the top of castle grayskull without you know sending the castle tumbling down so yeah the new roton is probably going to be about as big as this wind raider and uh it's got to come with a stand okay a stand to help it hover all right just like you know just like what we saw with the classics all right i hope that the new roton also comes with a similar stand for you to position it in a flying mode all right what do you guys think about that let's see if it happens in the 1980s golden books had a fantastic series of hardcover masters of the universe books and uh you know one of these stories here uh, dangerous games uh, it features the roton uh, with <laughs> with three passengers, okay, that is one spacious looking Roton, all right, Skeletor, Evelyn, and Beastman all snug and comfortable in there. Now, I don't think that the new Roton is going to be able to accommodate quite so many people, but an extra passenger would be nice. Now, over the last one year, the Roton has turned up in a couple of other toy lines, especially the Eternia Mini series. Uh, this one is tempting. I didn't pick this one up yet. Uh, I am considering it though. I mean, I, I just want to know how deep is the Eternia Mini series going into, all right? It seems like they've stopped. I don't know. Uh, but if they start doing stuff like the Evil Horde members and Snake Man and stuff like that, if they start doing Eternia Mini's Castle Grayskull, you know, I may have to reconsider collecting the line. But one thing that I did get was the Mega Construct. Two pack, all right, the one that came with Battle Cat and the Roton. Uh, I actually wanted to get this just for Battle Cat, but the Roton was a nice bonus. Now, I actually don't really collect a lot of Mega Construct stuff, uh, but you know what? I can see how it can be addictive. You know, technically, this is uh, basically Lego Masters of the Universe, all right. And the Roton functions as how a Roton should, okay? You just roll it along and it spins, okay? Roll it and spin, roll and spin, yeah? Just keep on rolling and spinning it, yeah? Just keep on going, guys. Shit. Okay, guys, so that's the video. Let me know your comments and thoughts on the new Roton that Mattel is putting out for this year. I want to hear what you guys have to say about it. And I'll catch you guys again real soon with more content and videos. Thank you and take care.